Hello everyone, it's Spawn Point, and I've got a question for you. Do you prefer to buy your games digitally or physically, and which is best? Well, today we're going to look at the pros and cons of both, along with a few things you might not have thought of. But is the popularity and convenience of digital games actually killing off physical discs? And would you be bothered if you could no longer buy games like this in 2024? But before we jump in, let me know down in the comments which you prefer. Is it digital or physical games? Now when it comes to buying them, you cannot beat walking into a store, browsing the shelves and picking up a copy, or waiting for that package to drop through your door. There's still something special about holding an item that you've bought knowing you actually own it, and it doesn't matter how many digital games that I buy, this still feels better. Also, seeing all of your games stacked up or displayed on your shelves just looks awesome. There are also so many great case and disc designs out there that you don't get that same experience when buying digital, and not to mention the steelbooks. Over the last few years, I've been collecting a few of these for the games that I really like, so it's great to see that they've not stopped making them yet. Although bizarrely, some of these steelbooks were provided with a digital game code rather than a disc. I also reckon there's something nostalgic about buying discs as well. Like I've still got my N64 and Sega cartridges that I had as a kid. Imagine at the time I was able to buy all of my games digitally. I'd only have a console and a couple of controllers to show. Whereas today I can show the whole lot including the boxes which instantly makes me want to play them again. And then if you fancy displaying your games in your setup or on your wall, well you can. Like I've got GTA Vice City on PS2 which sits above my desk. And I've got the Final Fantasy Rebirth one in my living room. Whereas when it comes to digital games, it's not quite the same. You scroll through a library of games either on your phone or on the store, add them to your cart, and voila, that game is now in your collection. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is far more convenient as you can search for what you want, buy, and start playing without ever leaving your room. And to be honest, about 95% of my game collection is actually digital, as that's what I prefer. But over the last year, it has made me realise that maybe I'm not ready to completely let go of physical games, even if the convenience of digital keeps persuading me away. It kind of feels like I've gone full circle and back to physical media. But then storing your games is something else worth thinking about. If you've got 50 games in your collection, do you have the space for them? I mean, I've got, what, 20 games here and I hide them all inside this cupboard. But every time I buy a new game, I need to find somewhere else to store them. Of course, if I was a collector, then these would all be out on display and would look awesome on my shelves. Whereas digital games can be downloaded and installed onto the console storage or stored on an external SSD. This means for the size of one physical game, I could have hundreds of digital games instead. However, storage isn't free, so if you wanted to store all of your games locally, you would need to spend quite a lot on SSD. Personally, I've got about a thousand games in my digital library across the PS5 and the Xbox series, but only about 100 of those games are downloaded and installed. Of course, you don't need to store all of your digital games locally, as your digital library will live in the cloud until you need to download them. Also, the benefit to digital is all of your games are in one place. They are easily searchable, you can't misplace them like a disc, no worries about scratching or damaging them, and you can see exactly how many you have. So yeah, it doesn't matter which option you go for, you still need to think about storage just in a slightly different way. Then there's jumping between games. So if you're like me and you're often playing two or three different games at the same time, you'll find yourself swapping games quite often. For disc-based games, that means physically changing the disc each time you want to play a different game. It's not a huge issue, but the amount of times I've sat down to play a game before realising the wrong disc is in is ridiculous. And this is probably the single biggest downside for me when I want to jump between games and using discs. However, digital, on the other hand, is incredibly convenient. You can load up one game, play for a bit, close it, and then open up another game without even leaving your chair. There's no worries about trying to find the case or find the disc is inside the right case. You can just click the game and you're done. There's obviously a fine line here between convenience and pure laziness, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Either way, I really like the fact that I can jump between multiple games without even thinking about it. And with things like Xbox Quick Resume, it will even load the game to the exact same spot that I left it. Now, when it comes to installing or downloading games to play, there is a notable difference between the two. Take launch dates. If it's a game that you're really looking forward to playing, maybe you've even booked the day off. Getting your hands on it as early as possible can be important. And that's why I think digital games are sometimes the better option. So if you go digital, you can usually preload the game days in advance, which means the game is downloaded and installed, often with any updates already applied. You can then jump on the game at midnight and start playing straight away. In fact, sometimes you get to play digital games a few days early as part of a pre-order bonus, something that we've seen from Call of Duty and various others. That's a pretty big incentive to go digital. Whereas physical games, you need to head out to the store to buy it or wait for it to arrive in the post, often with no idea what time it will come and no guarantee it will even come on launch day. Then as soon as it does arrive, you need to install the game and download any day one patches that could be huge. Also, there are some games which force you to download the entire digital game anyway, as there's no content on the disc itself. This means sometimes waiting hours to even begin to play the game, which can be incredibly frustrating. 
And then we have game sharing. So let's say you've got a friend who's also into gaming. Firstly, congratulations, and you both want to share games with each other. Well, if you buy your games digitally, you can technically share your entire library with a friend via account sharing. I'm not going to go into how you can do this here as there are plenty of videos out there, but you can essentially log into each other's consoles with your own accounts and share each other's games. This way you could split the cost of games as you're only having to buy the one copy. So digital games suddenly become half the price if you've got a friend that you can trust with your account details. Oh, and you can even play these games at the same time, which is awesome. Another scenario is you've got two consoles. So I've got one in my living room and another one in my games room. So instead of having to move discs between the two, I could just play the digital games on whichever console I'm using. For you, this could be in different houses or again in different rooms. But if you own a physical disc and your friend wants to borrow or use it, this is how we share it. Here you go. Thank you. So a comment I see quite a lot around digital versus physical games is the argument of owning them. Like me holding this case now means I obviously own the game as it's a physical item. I can store it on my shelves and whenever I want to play it, I can just grab it. Whereas digital games aren't quite the same. Now bearing in mind that 95% of my games are digital, but there's no guarantee that I actually own them. I mean, sure, I've bought them and they are linked to my Xbox or my PSN accounts, but those games could disappear at any minute. Firstly, the games could be removed from the online stores or delisted, although that's pretty unlikely. Or your account could be banned or hacked, or you completely forget your login details. That would mean your entire library of digital games would be gone in a heartbeat and there's no way of getting them back. Hopefully this never happens, but if you owned your games physically, you could still play your games on a different account. But then saying that, you could still lose or have your physical game stolen as well. I guess the question is, do we ever really own digital content? As for the cost, on the whole it appears at launch, digital games are either the same price or slightly more expensive than physical, which is interesting as they don't need to be made or delivered to you and you cannot resell them. Physical, on the other hand, can often be picked up for less at launch if you shop around, or wait a week or two and they are often even less again, although there is a cheaper way to buy digital games. So normally you would go onto the store and you would buy the games directly through the store using your card, but instead if you go ahead and purchase a gift card from sites that sell them for slightly less, you can normally save a little bit of money. For example, a £100 gift card cost me £87, then I redeemed that on the store before buying my games. So any digital games that I buy are now effectively 13% cheaper. But then stores like PSN and Steam also have great sales and offers on throughout the year that make some games incredibly cheap. So looking through the current sales, some of these games are 50-80% to 80 off. Although you could pick some of these games up secondhand from stores like CEX for even less. So physical games still come in cheaper most of the time depending on where you look. But then if you're not bothered about owning games at all, you have subscriptions like PlayStation Plus and Game Pass, where you obviously never own the game, but you can play as many games as you'd like for a monthly fee. Another thing worth thinking about is being able to sell your games. If you're a collector, you may never get rid of them, but what if you do want to sell them? Let's say you've just completed a game and you have no intention of playing it again, or it turned out to be absolutely terrible. Well, if you bought it on disc, you could take it back to the store and trade it in or sell it online, which in turn helps you with your next purchase. How much you get back varies quite a lot, but the fact is you could maybe make 50% of your money back. Of course, this also depends on how long you hold on to the game before selling it, as leave it too long and it's almost not worth selling at all. Digital, on the other hand, well, there's no trading or selling options here at all. So once you've bought it, you'll just have to keep it forever. It's another reason that you kind of want to pay less for digital games as there's no resale value. Personally, if I knew I was going to play a game for a really short period of time, maybe a week or two, or it has an incredibly short story, I would consider buying the game physically so I could sell it on afterwards. But sometimes you might not even have the choice of which version to buy, and that depends on the console that you own. If you've got the digital PS5 or an Xbox Series S, then you can only buy the digital games anyway. And it's for that reason that although I do buy most of my games digital, I would still always buy the disc version of the consoles, just in case there's a game that I want to buy. Maybe there's a cheap second-hand game in store, or if a relative bought you a game as a present, at least you could still use it. And then we have special edition or collector's editions of games. So although there are usually ultimate or deluxe editions for digital games, where you'll get extra skins or in-game items, the physical CEs are something else. I mean, take some of the CEs that we've had over the last few years, including Spider-Man 2, God of War, and Mortal Kombat. We've had some really nice items included. I know this is quite unique though, because not every gamer wants to display gaming merch in their room. But interestingly, there have been some CEs that although come with physical items in the box, as well as a steelbook, are only provided with a digital code for the game. In a way, this is good if you wanted a digital game, but the physical items. But it also means that this bundle is immediately worth less once you've redeemed the game code, as it's now missing the game. Hopefully this isn't something we're going to see moving forward, but I guess only time will tell. 
So there you have it, that is my take on the whole digital versus physical argument in 2024. What do you think? Is physical media and games dying out, or do you think it's here to stay? On the whole, I think there is a risk of physical games eventually disappearing, but I still believe there is a huge interest in it as well. Now personally, I like the convenience and the accessibility of digital games, but I like being able to see and hold my games and feel like I own something. So it's going to be interesting to see what you guys are saying in the comments of which one you prefer. Now drop a gaming is awesome in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for saying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my living room tour or my desk setup tour videos next. Well thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and follow me everywhere. Until next time.